Uh, all right, students, greetings of the day. Uh, let's start with today's topic. The topic we have been studying till now is our chapter number third, electrochemistry, which is based on the chemistry, which is made up of how electrical energy is used in our chemistry. That is electrochemistry. And we have done so many topics uh, till now. We have done almost six to seven lectures in electrochemistry, uh, I think. And we have studied what is electrolysis, what are Faraday's laws, and what is what are the applications of these laws, what is electrochemical cell, what is Nernst equation, what is the second part of Nernst equation. In the yesterday's class, we have just done how the Nernst equation can be made for the complete cell. That means if we are taking two half cells combining, it would make a complete cell. This is known to be uh, Nernst equation. And the point here is we have done each and every topic till now in our situation, but the topic of today's uh, lecture discussion is applications of Nernst equation. That we would see how this Nernst equation could be useful for us in our daily life or in our chemistry purpose. Okay, so let's begin with the topic, the applications of Nernst equation. Okay, so the first equation of application uh, of Nernst equation is calculation of the equilibrium constant calculation of the equilibrium constant. Now this equilibrium constant is known to be Kc. Okay. Now the point here is that J, the Kc, the equilibrium constant, how do it arise in the electrochemistry? See, when you have studied in the electrochemical cell, what was happening there? Zinc plus copper sulfate was converting into zinc two positive plus Copper. We were taking our zinc and copper. And what's happening in electrochemical cell that whenever we have provided them, uh, whenever we have started the reaction, after some time, my zinc is converting to Zn2 positive and copper is converting to, sorry, copper 2 positive is converting to copper. Same as it is with the help of salt breeze, there was a movement of sulfate ion. Right? So I just want to say that there is so much movement of the ions whenever my electrochemical cell is in the progress. Whenever my electrochemical cell is working, there is so much movement of ions, either it is cation or anion or the sulfate ions. So I would like to say that the concentration uh, would uh, concentration always keep changing? That means the zinc ion concentration is decreasing, whereas the copper ion concentration is increasing. Am I clear or not? The concentration always keep on changing in the electrochemical cell. So from this observation, we have come to know that after some time, there would be a time when the concentration of both sides would be almost equal. Am I getting, uh, are you getting my point? I want to say that if my zinc ion is kept on decreasing and copper ion is kept on increasing, there would be some point, I'm sorry, uh, there would be some point when the zinc ion is decreasing and the copper ion is increasing, there would be some point when there is no more tendency to uh, get a further change. I would replace this equation. The concentration would not be equal. The concentration would be constant. That would be a better sentence. That means how much zinc ion wants to decrease itself, it would decrease. How much copper ion wants to increase its concentration? It has increased. Okay, we have done that. Now the point is, whenever we represent this in the form of equation, in the form of graphical method, like this is a reaction, this is reaction progress, and this is known to be concentration of the ions. We have taken in the right hands uh, in the vertical position and in the horizontal position the reaction process and my zinc ion and my copper ion, they have been start decreasing. So a point would come when their 
concentration would be almost constant that particular point where that concentration is almost constant is known to be equilibrium constant am i clear or not the equilibrium constant is a point at which the concentration would be almost equal they would not further change they would have become constant almost that means if we start to change a further concentration it would revert back to the uh, uh, to the backward direction this is known to be a equilibrium reaction and that is known to be equilibrium constant okay so now let's see okay one more point which i would like to describe over here that since i have told you that whenever i would like to change i would like to increase the concentration it would again revert back to the direction so i would like to say equilibrium constant is that particular point which is known to be kc and its physical quantity is equal to the ratio of the concentration of the ions so i'm just so the kc is known to be the ratio of the concentration of the ions this is known to be my kc this is known to be my equilibrium constant now till now we have done what is our equilibrium constant our next purpose is how can we apply them how can we use this for calculating uh, in the form of nernst equation yani ab hame ye pata karna hai from nernst equation with the help of nernst equation how would we able to calculate our kc okay so let's begin with a small and short derivation okay now first of all the nernst equation is known to be e cell equals to e no cell minus 2.303 rt divided by nf log zinc 2 positive over copper 2 positive okay it would be copper that is initial fine product okay now we have done all the points over here either we are taking the reaction or not now if my reaction has been reached at the equilibrium constant that means the zinc 2 positive and copper 2 positive they has become equal ye to humne study kiya tha that electrode potential would be equal after some time the concentration would not be changed okay so do, with the help of this concept can i say my e cell that is equals to e cathode minus e anode that is equals to e copper 2 positive copper minus e zinc 2 positive zinc that would be equals to zero because this is equals to zinc i can write over here e copper 2 positive copper minus e copper 2 positive copper from this equation yes it would be cancel out and our e cell would be equals to zero so at the equilibrium constant due to equalization of both the electrode potential of the half cells my e cell would be equal to zero there would be no value of the e cell so from this equation whenever we put into uh, the above equation we will get the exact value of equilibrium constant and that is equals to e no cell minus please keep in your mind that in this equilibrium constant we would take the value of e no cell rather than e cell this is the final equation okay and same as it is if we put the temperature value equals to 298 kelvin that is at the room temperature what would happen my e no cell would be converted into 
0.0591 divided by n log oxidation divided by reduction this is known to be the equilibrium constant calculation okay and can i replace this whole equation with the kc yes we have done that kc is equals to the uh, concentration so my equation now become with the help of this equation can i say that my kc would be sorry not kc my e not cell would be equal to 0.0591 divided by n log kc this is the term you have to remember this is the equation you have to keep in your mind okay so you have to remember this particular formula how we can calculate our equilibrium constant and to remember this formula please keep in your mind that there is e not cell in the left hand side in all the equations we have done in the non equation there was only e cell at the left hand side but here e cell is equals to 0 so the answer would be e not cell equals to 0.0591 divided by n log kc okay so this is how we can calculate the equilibrium constant with the help of non equation am i clear now the point is um what would be happen if we calculate the equilibrium constant is there any kind of physical significance for us yes definitely if we would calculate the kc value suppose if i'm talking about this equation only the kc value is very high that is almost 10 raised to power 3 the action is almost completed so with the help of equilibrium constant we can calculate after how much time or uh, how much reaction has been completed how much extent of reaction has been completed am i clear so this is known to be equilibrium constant uh, and how we can calculate our equilibrium constant with the help of nernst equation okay so let's see uh, with the general trend the trend is after deriving a equation we need to check out a numerical hai na so let's go on with the numerical a simple numerical that is in your ncert textbook also okay the question we have calculate the equilibrium constant that means we have to calculate the kc for the reaction copper plus 2 ag positive is converting into copper 2 positive plus 2 ag okay but you please keep in your mind that we have been put the equilibrium uh kya bolte hain isko equilibrium symbol in this reaction we haven't done this we have put like this because the reaction has been reached at the stage of equilibrium okay now we have been given uh, the electrode potential of silver that is equals to 0.80 volt and the equilibrium so, sorry the electrode potential of copper 2 positive that is equals to 0.34 volt okay first of all we have to put the equation e not cell equals to 0.0591 divided by n log kc so first we have to calculate e not cell e not cell equals to e not cathode minus e not anode that means e not reduction Minus E not oxidation. So where is the reduction taking place in this uh, particular equation? The copper is converting into copper two positive. That is, there is oxidation. Two electrons have been removing up. Whereas the silver is accepting one electron to become Ag. That means there is reduction taking place. So it would be silver minus copper. one more point bachche whenever i am going to teach you any kind of numerical i am also telling you please keep in your mind that this should be reduction potential okay this should be the reduction potential and that has given to us we don't need to have a this is a reduction potential this is a reduction potential so this is 0.80 minus 0.34 the value would become almost 0.46 So 0.46 equals to 0.0591 divided by n equals to 2 because two electrons have been exchanged over here. 
log k. After solving this, can we calculate the kc definitely yes but please keep in your mind this is logarithm of kc we have to calculate only the kc so for calculating the kc suppose this will be 15.668 so for calculating the kc we need to calculate the nt log of 15.66 okay so this is how we can calculate it the equilibrium constant value okay so this is known to be equilibrium constant or oh, one more thing but please uh, keep in your mind that logarithm table would be given just check out how we can calculate the log value and the anti log value okay and one more thing the uh, possibility of coming this question would be little less because of little complex equation uh, due to anti logarithm but please keep in your mind how can we calculate the case okay all right so now we have done the first application same as it is let's move with the second application that is known to be gibbs free energy we have calculated the equilibrium constant now let's see how to calculate the gibbs free energy Gibbs free energy, and this Gibbs free energy is denoted by G. Delta G means change in Gibbs free energy. Okay, uh, in eleventh class, in the chapter number, I think six or uh, seven, six chapter that is thermodynamics. You have studied what is Gibbs free energy, what is uh, uh, I would like to say the internal energy, and you know very well that Gibbs free energy is something which relates with the work done. I am again repeating, Gibbs free energy that we have also studied is related with the work done. So here I would like to say, whenever we have been taking place into an electrochemical cell, electrochemical cell me kya ho raha hai? Whenever we are taking like my, uh, suppose I am talking about my electrochemical cell, that is. Suppose here the reaction has been converted. The zinc and copper has been converted to make zinc sulfate plus copper two phosphate. What would happen after some time when my electrochemical cell is taking place? When the chemical reaction is taking place due to the change in chemical reaction, there would be increase of more and more electrical energy. That's the definition of electrochemical cell. Now, that due to chemical reaction, there is formation of electrical energy. Now, the point is, as we have been kept the electrochemical cell on the work, I'm uh, completing my reaction with zinc and copper. They have been reacting with each other to again and again. After some time, what would happen if my chemical reaction is almost completed? My electrical energy would start decreasing. Am I clear or not? I'm saying. That my zinc and copper two positive, they are getting reacted to make zinc two positive plus copper. The reaction is taking place. The chemical energy is taking place. When the reaction would uh, reach to almost end, the lesser can use decrease in electrical energy. This is the first point. Now the point is. The electrical energy is getting decreased. That means there is a formation of less work done. I would like to say there is formation of less work done over there. Okay. So after some time, what would happen? I would like to say that my electrical work done is equals to decrease in free energy. My electrical work done is equals to decrease in free energy. Am I clear or not, Bache? I have just related the electrical energy with the free energy, or we can say the electrical work done equals to decrease in free energy. So the free energy is equals to minus delta G, and this is known to be electrical work done. Now the point here is, what is electrical work done? The electrical work done is actually the product for one mole. If I'm talking. 
E node cell into F. That is one parallel. The electrical work done for one mole is equal to F E node cell. That is how much electrode potential is producing over there and Faraday to just complete the particular unit. Now this is only for one mole. What would happen if you're talking for N moles? My reaction would become NF E node cell. Electrical work done equals to NF E node cell. If we put this into this one, we would get minus delta G equals to NF E node cell. Just a second. Minus delta G equals to NF E node cell. Same as it is, delta G equals to minus NF E node cell. Am I clear or not? Have you got why have been put the negative sign? Because there is decrease in free energy. So with this method, we can calculate our delta G equals to minus NF E mode cell. Okay, so this is how we can calculate our Gibbs free energy. Now, another point is we have done that E mode cell equals to 0 0.0591 divided by N log KC. Okay. This is done. This is our first equation. This is how can we can calculate our delta G. Another point is in the last application, we have studied how we can calculate our equilibrium constant. And the value of equilibrium constant would be E naught cell equals to RT divided by NF ln KC. And now, so can we put delta G equals to minus NF RT divided by NF ln KC? the NF, NF would be cancel out and it would be equal to minus RT ln KC. Or if I would simplify it, it would be become minus 2.303 RT log KC. So from Gibbs free energy, we can calculate, uh, we can easily calculate from Nernst equation the Gibbs free energy. Also, we can relate our Gibbs free energy with equilibrium constant. Am I clear or not? These are the two applications which suggest us that from the Nernst equation, we can easily calculate our Gibbs free energy as well as we can relate the both applications. Okay, so this was all about the application of Nernst equation. We would just see a short numerical based on this particular uh, equations and then we would wrap up the class. Okay, let's see a simple question. The question is given for zinc and copper. The very favorite example of mine also. Okay. The question is we have been given. Zinc and copper. Yes. First of all, we have been given the E note RHS, sorry, E note reduction and E note oxidation that we have been put. Abhi tak, I hope you will remember that copper is 0.34 and zinc is minus 0.76. Right? Now, what are the properties of zinc and copper? Okay, so now I want to say, yes, I have put it wrong. Now I want to say we have to first calculate the Gibbs free energy, which is known to be delta G equals to minus NF E mode cell. The N over here is 2, F is Faraday. E mode cell we can easily calculate that would be equal to 0 0.80, sorry, 1.10 after adding the both. So we can easily calculate the delta G. This is so simple. On the very same way as we have calculated our delta G with the help of E node cell, can we calculate our equilibrium constant also? Yes, which is equals to 2.303 RT log KC. Minus 2.303 RT log. And KC is known to be the concentration of zinc 2 positive divided by copper. And we have been provided in this equation 
yes zinc 2 positive is also one the copper 2 positive is also one molar okay so sorry there is a logarithm the equation would be changed delta g would be come from solving this equation suppose this is come to be minus 21 2300 and after solving the equation we would get log kc suppose it is come to be 37.20 and we can easily calculate the kc by taking nc logarithm okay sorry this was the wrong concept i was telling you okay so this is how with the help of nernst equation we can easily calculate the gibbs free energy as well as my equilibrium constant so my nernst equation has been completed along with the application one more point i would like to say we have been left with only the last topic that is batteries okay so please let me know if there is any kind of doubt or query regarding this topic okay one more thing which i would like to say you have seen that nernst equation or any kind of question in electrochemistry is totally based on the formula if you have remembered the formula you would easily calculate any kind of numerical okay and uh, the more chances of electrochemistry question would be to come in your board exam of a numerical as well as in your competitive exam like if you're uh, preparing for net or j okay so just remember the formulas and check out whether if we are taking e note cell e cell isn't there any kind of doubt isn't there any kind of problem in the sign also please check out the sign convention and you would easily calculate the all equations all right so this was all i wanted to say we have done our nernst equation if there is any kind of doubt or query please let me know please raise your hand if there is any kind of doubt or query Yes, class. Please raise your hand if there is any kind of doubt or query. Yes, class. Please raise your hand if there is any kind of doubt or query. Yes, class. Please raise your hand if there is any kind of doubt or query. Yes, class. Please raise your hand if there is any kind of